Okay, let's explore this net present value and different depreciation methods problem. I'll just read it to you and you can see the, the problem in front of you there. Wendy's boss wants to use straight line depreciation for the new expansion project because he said it will give higher net income in earlier years and give a larger bonus. The project will last four years, require a million seven hundred thousand of equipment. Now the company could e either use the straight line or the three year maker's accelerated method. Under the straight line depreciation, the cost of equipment would be depreciated evenly over its four year life, and we're going to ignore the half year convention for straight line method. And the applicable maker's depreciation rates are these numbers here, 33 and a third, 44.45%, 14.8.1, and 7.41. Okay, the company's weighted average cost of capital is 10% and its tax rate is 40, 40%. So question A asks, what will the depreciation expense be each year under each method? And I worked that one ahead um, uh, just to save some little time in this demonstration. All right, straight line, hopefully you see is straightforward, right? Just simply take a million seven divided by four. Now you can look at the look at how I calculated here or you can look up here on what I call the formula bar. Some people call this the insert function area or insert function bar. Okay, a million seven then four, and then you just copy it all the way down, right? It's the same thing. That's your depreciation per year. Now per makers, what we're gonna do is take one seven and multiply it times each of those rates. So the first year it's 33.33% uh, times the million seven costs, and I'll get rid of it. And then we've got 44.45, 14.81, and a million seven times 7.41 percent. Okay, that should be straightforward. Next, we've got to compute uh, the differences. Okay, so let's call this differences, and we just simply take um, the makers minus the straight line. Yeah, I think we'll go this way with it. And then I can double click here and that, oh actually because it's not right next to it, it won't work. So I slide that down, we should get all the differences. The next thing I've got to calculate, let me, uh, I'm going to adjust my screen here, let me pause this. Okay, now you've seen the screen jump just a little bit. All I did is adjust the columns here and add a new column called difference times 40%. Well, why are we doing that? Because 40% is the tax rate and there's a tax shield from depreciation, right? Ta uh, depreciation is a tax deductible expense. So as a result, if we've got differences in differences, dif differences in different depreciation methods, then that difference times 40% will represent the difference in actual cash flow associated with the project. So I'm gonna take the difference times 40% the tax rate. Okay, and I'm going to copy that down. So what do we see? We've got uh, uh, some favorable effects and then some unfavorable effects for the four years. Okay, so we've got the differences times um, the tax shield completed and we're working on part B here which which depreciation method would produce the higher net present value all right let's just jot in what the cost of capital is right so the weighted average cost of capital or you could simply abbreviate that as WAC is going to give it at or 10 percent right and then we can calculate the net present value. Oh, let me format that so we can actually see that correctly. That's 10%, and I'll take it to one decimal point just to make it clear. And then we're going to calculate the net present value on that. Okay, so the net present value then is going to type in equal NPV. Hit the left parentheses, and this is the way I like to do it. Then I come up to the insert function bar, call this up so I get a window. Right now, you can see the window, and the rate is given in that cell right there. So I click here, point to the rate. That's got it. And now I have to point to the values, which are these. They occur. We assume they occur at the end of all of these years. It's an assumption we make. And when we're done, I hit enter, and there's my net present value. I'll put a nice dollar sign around that. 
27044 um, is the correct answer. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that if, if we hold everything else the same between you know, what we think is going to happen between the two alternatives, if we use the accelerated depreciation method, we'll have high, a higher net present value by $27,044 if we use makers or accelerated depreciation over straight line. Okay, so part C says, well then why, why might Wendy's boss prefer straight line depreciation? Well, well keep in mind, he'll get a larger, um, higher net income in the early years and give him a larger bonus. So if he's focused on net income, Instead of cash flow, then he may get a larger bonus sooner, even though economically it makes sense to use makers. Okay, so if you were to say, is there a flaw here? I would say yes, it's the bonus plan, right? And we see this a lot in, in, uh, in various companies where the bonus plan, in theory, is supposed to align with um, what shareholders and what, what, what improves the wealth of the corporation as a whole, but sometimes we find differences and managers will act in their own best interest. Here we see evidence of the agency problem. Okay, I hope this was, uh, was beneficial for you.